Greetings from a gas station in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I am so close to getting back into Canada after my little tour of North Dakota. It's actually a lot tougher to get into Canada than it was to get into the States. I need to wait for a COVID test. You need a COVID test within 72 hours and you can't get one of the quick ones, you gotta get one of the slower ones. I got a COVID test at 7 a.m. this morning and now I'm waiting for results so I can get back into Canada. I had an amazing time in the Devil's Lake area. And then after that, I stayed for a meat eater shoot. That'll be season 11 of Meat Eater. Very excited, gotta meet the man, Steve Ranella the face of Meat Eater. I've been a big fan for a long time. And to get to share hook sets with them and meet the rest of the crew, Seth, Chester, Mandy was part of it as well. Um, and just, you know, I like seeing all the videographers and all the gear they use too. So yeah, Meat Eater, if you haven't heard of them, check them out. I got a series on Meat Eater called The Canadian Angle. Um, season two is, by the time you see this video, it's probably in the midst of dropping or just finished. But I got two seasons of The Canadian Angle on Meat Eater YouTube. And um, yeah, it's just a cool team to be a part of. But yeah, time in Devil's Lake. First off, Jason Mitchell Doris, thank you so much for your hospitality and uh, for, yeah, just helping me out. We'd never met before and he just went above and beyond. John Hoyer came out and fished with me for a little bit, showed me, showed me some of the juice. We did a little bit of poking around. And then some of the local Devil's Lake boys, Blake and Nate LaFleur, they lent us a snow bear. They helped us out with just everything imaginable. So people in Devil's Lake, people in North Dakota are amazing. Um, but anyways, we got the day to kill. I got some sketchy, not sketchy, just like some unhealthy gas station food I'm gonna eat now. We got some breakfast sandwiches and some pizza at 10 a.m. in the morning. And um, I did a little poking. I went to Cabela's, met a really nice man named David. He, uh, he gave me some info in the area, some, some ponds to check out. There isn't really too much around here for fisheries. You got the Red River going by and then a couple other sloughs and ponds. So I'm gonna just go check one of those out. I wanna catch a bluegill because we don't really have bluegills back home. So even small ones is a novelty to me, but um, we we're gonna enjoy a country sausage biscuit in my truck. You can watch me eat the sandwich and then we'll go fishing. You know it's good when it's $3.99. There's no way that pizza got put under today. Everything is so much cheaper in the States. I love being in the States. I don't know if I've mentioned that. America is a great place. All right, we're going fishing. Next stop, some random pond in the prairies. So that's kind of the end of the road there. I was, uh, I was hoping to drive right up to the access. I guess we're unloading the sled one more time. Yeah, we'll go run along here to the first lake. I think there's like two lakes, three lakes, four lakes we can access. Um, I want to catch a bluegill. That's really all I care about. I like to catch a couple bluegills, try live scoping them. This suit that I've been rocking for like second half of the season, it's called the Roughneck. This is like their entry level uh, suit Eskimo makes. It's got this sweet Sherpa lining and honestly, it's one of my favorites. Amazing for the value for floating. A floating suit is such a peace of mind when you're on the ice. I know Sam, loves that I'm wearing a floating suit all the time. It's just that one extra thing. You can still drown, you can still die with a floating suit, but it just stacks the odds in your favor. I've been getting a lot of questions about the boots too. These are Nats Thermal Plus boots, just stupid light. Not the warmest boots I've ever worn, but they're really lightweight, which is key. I have some warmer ones called Saskatchewan Pack Boots by Cabela's. They're wicked heavy and maybe not as waterproof. I think this is kind of the perfect, perfect mixture of lightweightness and and just how warm it keeps your feet. Because the Devil's Lake, it was like just stupid cold and, and uh, my feet were fine. So anyways, there you go. I was, uh, I was texting with Sam a bit today. My wife, Sam, if you guys are new to the channel. I said, yeah, I think I might go fishing while I got the day to kill. And she's like, Jay, you work too much. Take the day off. And I'm like, I love what I do so much. I love fishing. I love fishing more than ever. Are the cameras a little bit more work? Yes, but I wanna bring you guys along. I wanna go fishing. I love what I do. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sam. I just, just gotta make a video. This one's for Sam. Love you. All right, it's go time. So I have this thing about making sure my batteries are charged because I never know when I'm gonna need it next. And even though I knew the shoot was done yesterday and I wasn't really planning on fishing today, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna charge my live scope anyways because who knows. And now we're fishing today. I have no idea on depth. Water clarity looks marginal. 
It's a pretty small pond, lake. I don't even know what it's called, to be completely honest. Okay. Um, uh, if this is correct, there's like thousands of fish down there. This is, I don't know what's underneath here right now, guys, but I've never seen fish on my live scope like this before. I'm gonna get a, some sort of camera rigged up so you guys can see. All right, there's a bunch of marks under us currently. They all don't seem completely tiny, but I guess we'll find out when we get down there. So we are starting with a little chartreuse spike. I think this is a three millimeter tungsten jig. We're dropping down. Oh wow, oh wow. Look at all those fish chasing up. First fish, what have we got? We got a bluegill. <laughs> Did you see how long that took? <laughs> Mission accomplished. They're such cool looking fish. I wish we had them in Northwest Ontario, but we just don't. I I've heard of maybe the odd, odd like pumpkin seed being caught, but there's definitely no big bluegills. Look at the school down there. So I kind of just picked the middle of this pond, you know, just to kind of get a vibe for what the depth was um, and fish the basin often in these smaller ponds, the fish can kind of just be cruising out in the middle. Uh, as you can see, this is just, this pond is overloaded. I don't know if we're gonna get a big one in here. I don't want to, I've only caught one. I don't want to say too soon. Okay, I'm gonna try to go a little smaller, I think. I think I'm gonna maybe just go with a mealworm. This is something we don't really find in Canada too often. They're called Euro larvae. I think there's like, some people call them spikes. There's different types. But this is just so popular in the States using these using these things. These are the bigger ones. I had some some smaller ones in the bottom too. That Those are I think called spikes. I think these are called wax worms. Oh yeah. Ooh, this one's cutting some circles. Get out of there! That's what I'm talking about. Guys, I know for you panfish snobs that this is nothing special, but for a guy that never, really never catches bluegills, this is pretty amazing. There's an absolute aquarium down there. Are we just gonna drill one hole and catch like 100 bluegills? This will be the easiest video I've ever filmed. How much of a buildup when you just drill one hole and there's just like 400 bluegills underneath you? Like, I, I don't know, I think that's all right. That's not a complete peanut. We got the counter going. This is unfair. Ooh, here's a big one coming. Here's a couple big ones coming. Yes, that was one of the nicer marks. Oh, come on. Oh, that's a pretty fish. These are such sweet looking fish. Grand Forks, the bluegill capital of North America. You heard it. All right, we're going inside. All right, today we're using the Frostbite Panther Stick, the 29 Ultralight, also known as the Fantastic. And this is just silly. I want that fish on the right there. Oh, there's two. I thought it was one big one. Got him. Just a slight lift. Oh, baby. How many are we at? Keep the counter going, Brandon. It's an eight inch bluegill. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, a monster bluegill is like 11 inches, I would say, 11, 12. 12 is like as, as big as they get really, but I've caught a couple bluegills around 10 inches. In Manitoba, their uh, master angler program, uh, I think it's seven inches. Pretty much every bluegill you catch is a trophy in Manitoba. Oh, that was the best bite yet. Oh, around some better size ones. Sweet, so sweet. I wish we had more of them back home. I think I'm gonna go get the underwater camera. I wanna see what these fish are really doing. Yeah, I gotta get the camera. Those fish are like right into the ice. This little jig is getting picked clean. This is fun. This is something different. It was a good plan B rather than sit in my truck all afternoon. We back with the AquaView. All right, so the camera I am using is the HD7i Pro by AquaView. And I did a whole video where I took the battery out, swapped it out for Dakota Lithium 10 amp hour, and I added a couple USB ports on the end and a charging dongle as well. So what that allows me to do is, of course, I get twice the runtime, half the weight, so I shed some weight, half the run, or uh, double the rent, take it. Double the runtime, half the weight. Um, normally these, I think, last six, seven-ish hours, and now it 
you know, lasts all day. And then with those little USBs, I don't have to worry about an extra battery for the recorder. This is the recorder you need. I will link it below. If you buy it off that link, I get a little bit of kickback through Amazon. It's called the Aver Media Pro Gamer 2, uh, Live Gamer Portable 2. Um, it's got an HDMI in, and then it's got to get powered, and then you put a micro SD card in there to, uh, to record. A couple things to note with this recorder. Do not stop the recording by pulling out the battery. Stop the recording by stopping the recording, by pressing the button. How much technology is too much? Comment in the comments below. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! This is unbelievable. Oh! I lost him! Okay, I'm staying here all day. This is, oh my. Okay. I'm in heaven. Oh, I want that bigger one. Oh man. I don't think I need real bait anymore. Oh, that's a nice one. I am a big fan of North Dakota and it's plentiful medium sized bluegills. I know there's big ones. Man, that's cool. Ooh. Okay. We're gonna keep with the, oh, look at the pike. Look at the pike. Oh man, we're gonna catch this pike. I wish I had another rod to drop down. Bah, bah. We're gonna catch this pike, watch this. This is so cool. Oh, he's back. Bobby the bluegill. There's a big fish down there. That's the one I wanted. Oh. Nice. Let's get a nice, a nice close up of how pretty these fish are. Aren't they cool? I know I've said that like six times already, but I don't know. Yeah, about nine and a half, nine and a half incher going back down. It's, I know I keep talking about how this is a learning tool, but just you'll learn exactly what your bait is doing down there. You know, when you're twitching it, what that looks like, how big of a movement you need and how to translate that into your rod tip. I would say just the, the most common piece of advice for, for pan fishermen is like, if you're new is just less is more. You don't need to do anything too crazy. So when I get in front of these fish now, I'm just tapping them on spot. So I'm kind of doing it a pencil grip. You can, you can hold it like this, but in the shack, I don't know, it's just more comfortable I find to do the pencil grip. You can see I was just pretty much letting it sit there. Just tapping it on spot, tapping on spot. If I want, I can raise it a little bit, but I mean, I could even just hold it there and a fish is likely gonna come in. Look at that. No movement at all. You don't wanna be rip jigging it like a lake trout or something. Oh, they both wanted it. That guy just got the worm though. Like, otherwise you would just set the hook, you'd be like, oh, why aren't they staying on? But then you can see. Oh, did you see? Oh, that was good. That second sort of pump. There is a beautiful orange belly bluegill. Oh, that fish just charged. Pump, pump. <laughs> Do you see how long you sat on it? That was cool. 
He sat on that for so long till he did that final little slurp. I might have been able to get him the first time. Pretty awesome. How many hook set clips does a person need? I don't know. I'm going to put a jig directly below my camera. I'm gonna point it straight down. All right, there we got the Bluegill Cam 3000. 12 pound fluoro, a little bit heavy just so it doesn't break off. And then that jig. Oh, this fish is coming in fast. <laughs> we got him, we got him. And he gone. That was cool. You can actually barely feel him on this. We got him. Big Bertha. Big Bertha on the Aquaview. Can she break 12 pound test? I know, I know it's goofy. This is hilarious. They're just all taking turns. Well, it worked. That was enough on that. Oh, a crappie. Oh, I'll take a crappie. No, 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 no. I want the crappie. I want the crappie. Come on. No, get out of there. No, 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 no. I want the crappie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, stop it. Get back. Get back. Stop. I want that crappie now. One more, one more. Ooh. Ooh. All right, we're ending it with that guy. What a fun way to spend an afternoon in Grand Forks. I think we probably could have caught like unlimited as you saw, they just kept coming. Um, if you're looking to get a kid or a, a newbie into ice fishing, something like this is the way to go. Don't don't take them out, uh, you know, fishing for lake trout necessarily. Not that you could, not that that couldn't be good, but like this, especially with underwater camera, it can keep you stimulated. Something to watch. Uh, super good for. Well, it's just so entertaining. I mean, I'm a kid, but like, yeah, watching these fish swim through, so cool. I could do it for hours, but I got to get back into town and we got one last stop. I want to show you something kind of cool in Grand Forks. All right guys, we got one more stop at, I actually don't even know what this mall is called, the mall in Grand Forks. I will link it below, but we're going to check out the first Ketchikook retailer in the United States. We got a couple more popping up. Yeah, they got Ketchikook on the shelf, so I'm excited. Been chatting with the guys a bit. I told them I was coming through town and I want to come say hi, so looking forward to seeing it. Mike, say what's up. Hi. We got Mike. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, veteran owned and operated companies uh, opened up in 2015. There you go. Nailed it. And proud retailer of? Catch and Cook. You're wearing the hat. I'm wearing did, the hat. Did, were you planning that for? Uh, maybe, you put it on? Yeah, maybe. you put it on when I walked in the door. So Brothers Firearm Shop is the first retailer in the United States of America. Uh, so cool to see it on the shelves. Um, and I was like, you know what? If I'm in town, gotta stop by and check it out. But uh, I got a nice shirt for Sam, a shirt for myself. And uh, yeah, if you guys are in Grand Forks, they are our first American retailer of hopefully many. But uh, come support them. Come say hi to Mike and Travis and uh, they'll set you up. That's it for the video. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the next video I'm back in Canada. If the next video I'm still in the States, that means I probably contracted COVID, but we're not gonna talk about that right now.